guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to be doing uh, something different. This is a new segment that's going to be on our channel, which is called Movie Reviews. And so today we're going to be reviewing the Black Panther movie. So let's get started. Okay, so we saw this movie on Saturday. We saw it the day after it came out which was the 16th of February and well basically just to give you guys a heads up that this is spoiler yeah. so everything that we're going to be talking about is spoilers for the movie so just to warn you if you don't want any spoilers don't watch this video watch this video after the movie the plot of the movie was basically about Black Panther which his name was I think T'Challa, but it is about him and how he was becoming king and it takes place right after Civil War, right after his father died. And so through all this stuff that he's been going through and then at the end he obviously becomes a king and he learns a great lesson about being a leader. So let's get into the review. So the first topic we're going to be talking about is Wakanda. Yeah, so a little introduction on Wakanda is it's, it's the place where this movie takes place. It is a kingdom of which Black Panther, he rules over. And so basically Wakanda is like a really pretty area in Africa and it's hidden. And my first impression of Wakanda, I thought it was a beautiful place. I actually like how it was hidden, which really made it cool because it was hidden in like layers and layers of yeah. places. I thought it was so cool how it was like, it was like a tree area after you go into like a portal area and then you have these trees and then there's another portal to Wakanda. Yeah, and Wakanda and the reason why they hid the place was because it had the strongest metal on earth which was vibranium. If you don't already know is basically Captain America's shield that he used to have but doesn't have any more and so this is basically where all these vibranium comes from and we all thought from Captain America First Avenger that well there was no vibranium left yeah. only his shield but in Wakanda there's actually all this vibranium that they can actually make really cool technology the vibranium is stored in this huge mountain that has all vibranium area and it's really beautiful, the technology there. And the yeah, movie. and in Wakanda, they have advanced technology, so it's not like your modern day technology. It's so advanced because vibranium is just a weird kind of metal that makes their technology really good. The second topic we are going to be talking about is Black Panther. So, yeah, so Black Panther, obviously, he is a mysterious person that, first of all, we didn't know. So in Captain America Civil War, we just got introduced as this character without even knowing his origin story. All we knew was that he wore black and he he, he kind of looked like a black he kind of looked like a panther and he didn't like Bucky. Yeah, and that his father died and we knew nothing yeah. about this guy. I don't know. I think his name is Sakal. I don't know, sorry if I pronounced the name wrong. Yeah. I I honestly just call him Black Panther. Yeah. But in the movie, he was basically, obviously, the main character. It's yeah. all about him and how he automatically, right after Captain America Civil War, when his father died, he had to take over the throne. And so I really liked him because he obviously was already born a leader. Yeah. And after the movie, he really learned how to be more of a better leader. Something that I first, when I saw him in the movie, not Civil War, when I first saw him inside of Black Panther, the movie, I thought that it was going to be like him based a lot of action, but it was more of him talking about the, like being a king and stuff. And I liked how he's so civilized and not like, oh, like all the Avengers are different than him and he's like peaceful and he's born a leader, like Rup said. Yeah, I feel like, especially in the movie, I was noticing this a lot. But when something went wrong, he wasn't like a lot of the other friends, like worried and all upset. He was very calm about it, which I think makes a good leader. And I honestly think, this is another talk, but in Avengers Infinity War, if all the leaders die, all the originals, all the originals. died, I think that he would actually be a good leader to lead them. 
because you know he already has all these leading skills and especially in this yeah. movie like he's so calm and i yeah. really like that about black panther and like all the other avenger leaders or captain america and like tony stark they're they're really different because they all they want is like more of a war kind of thing not really a war so much but they're not there's something about black panther that is way different than all the marvel characters and i just it's really amazing the third thing we're going to be talking about is eric Kilmer. Killmonger. Oh. So basically, this guy, he's obviously the villain. We all thought it was this other guy. I don't know, I forgot his name, but I thought it was him, but actually it wasn't. It was Killmonger. And basically, he's this kid who was a descendant or the son of Black Panther's uncle. So that's a little confusing, but he's basically Black Panther's cousin. Yeah, just and he's hum half human and half Wakanda. And so basically, he his father got killed, and he was left alone with no parents. So he had to grow up by himself. But he knew about Wakanda, and so he's always wanted to like take over Wakanda and change the way they do things. Like he wanted their weapons to be used against people that were like destroying the world and obviously the wakandian people they they don't they don't share their vibranium they keep yeah. it to themselves and that's why they're hidden and so he was basically the bad guy and he took over wakanda and he defeated black panther or we thought he defeated him so he was the new king, and well, he was doing all this bad stuff and transporting yeah. these vibranium, and he was just being a really mean guy to especially all of the servants and the guards in Wakanda. Yeah, um, when I first thought about um, Eric was, I thought, well, originally when they were showing his dad and stuff, I saw the kids playing basketball, and I, I did not know that that was his son, the uncle's son. I was like, who, why are they showing this kid? It makes no sense. And now after f finishing the movie, I get so much of it. Yeah, my first thought about him, I when I saw the kid, yeah. I had no clue it was him. I was like, oh, they're just showing this kid. Like, oh, this is like really cool. They're showing just like how it is in Oakland and stuff like that. Yeah. But then like when I found out it was him, I was like, oh, wow. And especially since he was like really rude, like I... I get why he was doing that. It's just he could have done it in another way. And he could have been nice to the people. He was so mean to them to where, like, he could have been. He could have led them. But he was just so mean. Like, he burned all the plants that, that makes, would make that makes the, the black, people king. Makes the black, black Panther. Panther. And so I thought that was so... I was so mad when that happened, honestly. But, I mean, at the end, he gets defeated by Black Panther to talk. Tall, I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> and well, he dies at the end, but I liked the way he died because you know, Black Panther, he took him to see the sunset because his father was like, in Wakanda, the sunset's the most prettiest thing in the whole entire world yeah. and stuff. And so basically, he died watching the sunset. And I thought that was really good that Black Panther did that because that's all he wanted to see, basically. But I thought it was kind of really nice of Black Panther, like we said before, how he's so calm. When he, when Eric was going to be dying, he said, there's another way we can still make you alive with the technology and you can be one of us. He decided his own death. Yeah. The next topic is our favorite character, and our favorite, favorite character was Shuri. And well, my first impression was her was that she's really funny, and that's the big reason why I liked her, because she was the most funniest character out of all of them. And you know, she was a 16-year-old girl who basically run all the technology, built all this technology for Wakanda. And that's why I liked her, because she was basically a strong female lead as well as the other ones. What I liked about her is how she was really funny, like Roop said, but like when she was with Black Panther, or Taka, it was really different because like, it was the hilarious moments. And I just, like whenever she was with Black Panther, it just made me like really laugh a lot. 
Yeah, because they had a. I always what I especially liked was especially their brother and sister yeah. relationship was a very good relationship. Honestly, that was also my favorite part about that movie was just the relationship between them. Like they were so good together and stuff, and like they joked around with each other, which I like that a lot. Okay, so I don't know what number we're on, but the next topic we're talking about is how this movie relates to Thor Ragnarok. Now, especially me, I thought that this movie really related to Thor Ragnarok. Like, it was basically had some sort of plot. And the reason being I thought that was because in Thor Ragnarok, obviously, Odin dies. And in Black Panther, his father dies. And so they both have to basically become a ruler of their kingdom and so they both face challenges they even go out of their kingdom because they're banished or some sort of that but then they come back they take back their kingdom and they learn a valuable lesson about being a leader and so i always thought that the whole entire movie i was thinking about wow this is really related to thor ragnarok and stuff and you know i feel like it just was related to it so our next topic is the post credits since they were there was two post credits um the second one was very important the first one was, was as well important yeah but not as important as my, the second one was at least okay, to me okay so the first one we obviously wakanda the kingdom was blocked off from the rest of the world they didn't want to have any communications with anyone they didn't want people coming in taking their vibranium and using it for bad uses but after the whole entire thing with Killmonger and Black Panther, all of that, that made him learn that, well, we need to start becoming involved in more of the rest of the world. So Black Panther goes to the State of the Union and stuff, and he's just there, and he's like, okay guys, we're gonna join you guys for now on. And so that's basically what he does, is he just joins them, and he's like, I'll let you guys share some of our vibranium that we make. And so then the second post credit, which is the most important one that I thought, I, I thought the other one was important, but this one was, yeah. this one set up Avengers Infinity War, which honestly I've been waiting five years for. Yeah. So basically we enter in and the kids are saying, no, white wolf, white wolf, and stuff like that. And uh, basically we see the kids looking at some person and i was thinking in my head i'm like this is captain america or it has to be bucky i was like it's either one of them because in the trailer we see captain america yeah. with black panther and he's like holding up his shield and stuff like that yeah so i was like it has to be one of them and then we see cherie girl yeah come in and she's just like looking at him and then we see bucky's face and we're all like what like, oh my god, it's Bucky! And then he's like, oh, hi. He's like, oh, good. good to know that you're awake and you have a lot to learn here and stuff. And that sets up, basically, Avengers Infinity War. And so when I saw that, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it's actually so real because this was the last movie before we can finally move on to Infinity War that we've been waiting for and this just basically shows us where especially Captain America and Bucky are because we don't know where the heck they left to. So our last topic that we're going to be talking about is the moment you guys have been waiting for, what we thought about Black Panther and what our thoughts were from it. So we're going to scale it from a 1 to a 10, from 1 being the worst to 10 being the best. Yeah, so in my opinion, I think think that overall it was such a good movie I loved it I think though I rated an 8 and the reason why I did this was because there was not a lot of action and I was really wanting a lot of action and but there's drama too in it but as well I was kind of a little confused at some parts yeah. but I feel like if I watch it again I would like it better, but I give it an 8 out of 10, which I mean is still pretty good. I really like that movie though. Well, I'm going to rate it somewhat close to that number. I'm going to rate it 6. I'm not rating it, I'm not saying it's horrible. I love that movie. Like, like, like Roop said though, it wasn't that much action. And I was looking forward to action and 
boom boom and pew pew. But no, there was no action. And I was kind of disappointed in that. But the rest was really good. And I loved how like a beautiful the scenery was and everything. It just was missing the marble piece to it, I feel like. Okay guys, so this brings us to the end of our first movie review of Black Panther. Obviously, as you have seen, our channel has changed from Disney Toys 101 to Disney Magic. We are not doing a lot of toy video related things. We're doing more of Disney related things. So look out for a lot of Disney stuff that we're going to be doing. But don't worry, we're still doing toy stuff. And yeah. So with that being said, make sure you guys subscribe to Disney Magic, like this video, and comment down below if you watched Black Panther, what you thought about it, and rate it from a scale to 1 to 10. We want to know what you think. Yeah, and don't forget to have a magical day. day.